Welcome, hi! I figured I would just sit down and do the mid-year book freakout tag or mid-year freakout tag. I don't really know what it's called exactly. You're literally kidding me. Yeah, I figured I would just do the mid-year freakout tag because I'm already planning to do another mid-year video talking about like all the books that I've read so far this year. But I thought this would be, this would be interesting. Like tags are cool. I wanted to try it out, you know, see what my answers are. I know what my answers are because I wrote them all down, but I thought this would be fun. Like hone in, focus on some specific books. You know, it's a big tag that's been going around booktube for years. I don't really remember who started it. I think it's had a few iterations throughout the years, but I figured we would just sit down and do it since it is now the end of June, which means it is about the halfway point in the year, first six months, you know, they've come and gone somehow. Now the next six months are gonna come and go as well. Let's just get started with the first question. I'm gonna put all of them down below and I'll also put them on screen so you see what I'm answering. First question is honestly probably one of the easiest ones I'm answering and that is the best book you've read in 2024. That will have to be this boy right here. I, this is probably not, it's probably not the best like collector's way of doing this but I just have my three favorite books of all time here because I don't know how to display them. And this book, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro is my, the best book I've read so far in 2024 and also probably will just be my number one book of the year because it has made it to my all time favorites list. I read this back in March, I believe, for my uh, reading literary fiction to get my life back together video. And whoa, did this book find me at the right time. I think I would have had the same reaction in different points in my life. Like, I don't really know that it's necessarily like, boom, this is the exact perfect time for me to read this type of story, but this book just, it is like, ugh. Wow, I did not think about how to talk about it. This book hit me in exactly the right places. I think it was very much a slow burn in weaseling its way into my emotions because in the beginning, it's very like, slow unfolding of what's going on in this story. It focuses on the themes of like innocent, loss, growth, aging, life, memories, all of the above. Kazuo Ishiguro's writing style was just so simplistic and kind of like minimalistic in a way that I could see not working for everyone and I wasn't sure if it was working for me in the beginning, but then once I started to really understand what the point in this story was and the messages it would have about life in general yeah yeah it got me i fully sobbed on camera so you if you want to see that i think you should watch the video i actually really like that video so yes best book i've read in 2024 is definitely never let me go by kazuo ishiguro the next question is how many books have you read this year on goodreads i'm technically at 39 but i included oh the places you'll go by dr seuss because i graduated college this year and my friend got it for me and then i we read it together so i added it to my goodreads challenge but i'm not including it it's not in my notion i just kind of added it to goodreads for no reason but it's not in my notion so I've technically read 38 like novels so far this year that's a lot that's the most I've ever read like up to this point in the year I'm, I've already hit my goodreads goal and I'm not gonna change it because usually 30 is like the amount I want to read but because of all the videos that I've been doing and like getting into getting this channel started I've been able to read a whole lot more. Third question is the best sequel you've read so far this year. And I think I have two answers for this. I haven't read a whole lot of sequels. I don't think I did do my completing series video. So I read like a few sequels for that, but I'm gonna grab one of them. I don't have the other one on hand right now. Okay, so the first one I, I think is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a pretty solid continuation of the Ninth House story and the Alex Stern series. I really enjoyed being back in this world and in this setting of Yale and secret societies and magic. That's basically the premise of the series. I do have like some issues with some of the things that were developed or some of the ways that the story progressed in this book, but there are also so many things that I ended up loving, especially Detective Turner. I've talked about him endlessly. That is my man. And I'm excited to just see the series continue. I just had a blast reading this book, honestly. I, I'm happy to continue this series. Like I really like Ninth House. I think I like this one just as much. So that's, that's good to me. Like, I'm happy with that. My other answer for this question is probably The Last Graduate 
by Naomi Novik. This is the sequel to A Deadly Education, which was the last book that I finished in 2023 last year. So then The Last Graduate was the first book that I finished this year, and I ended up giving that five stars. I just thought it was a super solid, again, a super solid continuation of the series and the setting that I grew to know and love in the first book. I just really love the way Naomi Novik writes the lead character's perspective and her inner monologue, and I loved seeing the dynamics that blossomed in the first book kind of continue to grow and develop in the second book. The friendships are really like one of my favorite parts of the series. I feel like I haven't really read a whole ton of sequels this year, which I kind of want to remedy. I want to read more sequels. Okay, the third question is new release you haven't read yet but want to. My answer is definitely The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. Again, as you saw, I do enjoy Lee Bardugo's writing. I've read Ninth House. I've read The Six of Crows duology. I really enjoy her writing and the characters she creates. I'm a little apprehensive for The Familiar just because it feels like a bit of a departure from her other books and I don't know how I'll feel about it like I don't even fully really know the premise but I'm okay with not really knowing I just really do enjoy her writing it really works for me personally so the familiar is one that I really want to check out at some point this year next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year and this question's a little bit hard because I don't keep up with new releases that much this year I'm trying to kind of change that and I've had anticipated new releases for this first half of the year. So I did find two books that I am interested in reading, but the thing is, I'll, I'll just get into it. So the first book that I am anticipating is I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. I've never read any of his books before, but I've been meaning to for years. I actually just went to the library today and I checked out two of his books, My Heart is a Chainsaw and The Only Good Indians. This one I've been meaning to read for forever and My Heart is a Chainsaw I also have been interested in because like Books and Lala loves this book. Don't know if we have the same taste, but I have recently been really wanting to dive into the horror genre more, especially with having recently read Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay, and I really enjoyed his writing. I want to dive into another iconic horror author, so I feel like he could work for me, and this book just sounds really interesting. I was a teenage slasher because it's following a killer. So it's like first person about a killer, like a slasher dude. So I'm really interested to see how that is. I do want to read some of his other books before getting into it. That This book comes out in July, like July, actually it might come out next week. I don't know, it comes out literally very soon. So I am really interested in reading that, but again, I haven't read any of his books yet, so it's not like highly anticipated necessarily. And then the next book is Intermezzo by Sally Rooney. I think that's how you say it. I'm not the biggest Sally Rooney fan. I've read Normal People and Conversations with Friends, and I have Beautiful World, Where Are You? While I'm not really that obsessed with her writing, I think she does interesting things with her books. And when this book was announced, I was pretty interested or excited to like see a release of a new book of hers. And when I heard the characters that we would be following, I actually was more interested, which other people I saw, at least on Twitter, didn't really feel this way. It follows like three bro brothers after the death of their father. And people were like, oh, following men, I don't want that. And I totally disagreed just because the character of hers that I've related to the most was Connell from Normal People. So having Sally Rooney write male characters might work for me? I don't know. The plot of the book sounds really interesting to me, so I, I'm i interested. I'm definitely keeping my eye on that book and that release, but again, like, these are two books that I'm, like, anticipating, but I, I don't have any other, like, authors that I'm, like, dying for or, like, waiting for their next release, at least for the next half of the year. Next question is biggest surprise. So, I actually, by the way, quick intermission, I took these questions from Sarah Caroli's latest video, just because her video came out and I was already planning on doing this. Um, so this might have questions that aren't really in like the original. I think she actually got the questions from another booktuber, her name's Katie. So yeah, that's like where these questions are coming from because I didn't come up with any of these. I have three answers for this. I don't have the first book, but the first book is Nora Goes Off Script by Annabelle Monahan, And this was a surprise for me just for multiple reasons, because I ended up really loving this book. I ended up crying at the end a lot, which romances, they can do that for me. Like, it's not a surprise that I'll, I'll be crying at the end of a hard-hitting romance, but this one just like really ended up working for me. I think it was, it was a surprise for me because I was just kind of going in for like a light, 
fun, short, summery, cute little romance. And then I got something a little bit more emotional that I wasn't expecting. And going into it, I wasn't sure if her writing style would work for me because it's very curt. It's very short sentences. Like she doesn't really linger too long on anything. It felt a little too short for me, but it ended up working for me in the end with the emotional moments with it being so curt. It just like really hit you with the emotion that she's like portraying. So I really enjoyed that book and now it has me excited to read other books of hers. I have same time next summer. It's up there somewhere and I do want to read her new release summer romance as well. My next big surprise was Not in Love by Allie Hazelwood because this was almost five stars for me. I don't know if maybe I was being a little too overexcited. It's like 4.5 stars. I just really ended up loving this story. I had really low expectations. I did not think I would like this. It is a bit of a, a bit of a departure from her other books but it still feels very Allie Hazelwood to me so that's why it worked fine for me but I just found the extra spice to work really well for me first of all but I also think it helped in progressing the relationship in this story like it really worked for Allie Hazelwood to tell the story she wanted to tell with these two people and and seeing them kind of come together I think like there were a few things that like weren't perfect for me um but a lot of things were also very standard Allie Hazelwood and it, it was just a very big surprise like I did not think I would like this book but I'm so happy I did because it came out on my birthday and I mention that every single time I talk about this book <laughs> and then the last book that was a surprise was a disappointment and that is The Golden Enclaves by Naomi Novik so I did mention The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik that was the second book in the Sholomance trilogy this is the final book. I read this for my completing every series I'm in the middle of video. I just did not love this book. I gave it three stars and it was a surprise because I just really thought this would be an all time, like new all time favorite trilogy, like across the board. I think it kind of has that high status as like a favorite trilogy, but also more so the first two books are favorite books. This just, I don't know, she dropped the ball a bit for me. Like I found the plot to be a little messy and I found the development of certain relationships and characters to be weird. I also found Elle to get a little bit more grating in this book than in the other books previously. Like I like being in her head, but this book it got a little much. So that, that was definitely disappointing and a surprise and also kind of why I was putting that book off for a bit. This next question is new favorite author, either like a debut author or new to you and that is absolutely Kazuo Ishiguro again like I'm gonna read all of this man's books I don't know I just borrowed the remains of the day from the library but I want to read more of his books for sure I think this one will probably like reign supreme and stay my favorite book of his just because the bias of it being like my first of his books and just the specific story like I don't know that anything else would really hit me the way that this one does definitely a new favorite author for sure one that I will be reading more work from in the future 100% and then two quick little mentions um, I want to mention Abby Jimenez I read just for the summer this year and I really really enjoyed that I've not been putting her off but she kind of fits in line with like Emily Henry type romances and I enjoy those so I think she's an author that I want to continue to read as well and then Annabelle Monaghan like I want to read more of her stuff as well <laughs> okay next question is new fictional crush or book boyfriend or whatever you want to call it I did write down three technically but honestly I kind of just have one answer and that's freaking Thorn from the Lunar Chronicles this man Captain Thorn I love him I love him so much and thinking about being in this world and thinking about the romance and the progression of Cress and Thorn's romance is just it's so cute. It's so cute. They're my favorite characters in this series. And Thorn, he just literally has me giggle and kick my feet. <sighs> there are so many moments. There's so many moments between the two of them where this man says something, does something, and I am swooning. So he's absolutely, he's absolutely it. He is my new fictional crush. And I feel like it just makes the most sense that like a what? Okay. I feel like it makes sense <laughs> that a fantasy like YA series would conjure a new fictional crush for me. He's 20 years old. I think he's 20. I'm pretty sure he's 20. So like we're chilling there. Yeah, love him. Other honorable mentions are Miles from Funny Story. This is possibly the ugliest I could have myself look for you guys, but I cannot believe I forgot to mention Detective Turner. I think he wasn't a new character to me this year, but Detective Turner. 
is number two, baby, or number one. I don't know. I love that man, but yeah. <laughs> Hi. This next question is also interesting. Books that made you cry. Um, can I say all of them? That's not true. Not every single book has made me cry this year, but so many of them have. I am an emotional person. That is why I love reading. It stirs up so many emotions in me, and one of them is crying. The main answer for this, though, is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I sobbed so hard reading this book, but I can name literally so many more. Happy Place made me cry. The Last Graduate made me shed a couple tears. Funny Story made me cry. Just for the Summer made me cry. Nora Goes Off Script. Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. A whole, a whole lot of books made me cry this year, and that's just par for the course. That is what happens every year. I I love when books make me cry, and for the most part, books usually do. If I go too long without a book making me cry, something's wrong. And then books that made you happy. I think that I would answer Funny Story by Emily Henry because despite it making me cry, it made me laugh so much, and it was a very fun experience. Another one I think would be Cress. Again, all of the Thor and Cress moments were amazing. Cress is definitely my favorite book in the series just because of my bias towards Cress and Thorn. Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. That is my favorite Allie Hazelwood for sure. That one made me very, very happy and very giddy. And I loved it. I loved Love Theoretically. The next question is the most beautiful book you've bought or received this year. This is kind of hard. I don't really buy like special edition books. I have a few like favorite covers. I really like the cover for Just For The Summer. I really like the cover for Love Theoretically. I love the new Lunar Chronicles covers, but I wouldn't say that's like any of like the most beautiful book. I think I'm gonna say Horror Movie though by Paul Tremblay. There's just something about this Barnes & Noble exclusive edition that I'm in love with. I really love this cover. It's so simplistic that it works so well for me. The red sprayed edges are so good. And then the marked up screenplay from the movie as the end papers is such an amazing detail like they did not have to go that hard and yet they did this is probably my favorite physical book that i've gotten this year but again i i don't really acquire like special editions or super gorgeous books like i i like buying books for the covers but i also really enjoy buying books just to hold and love and kiss <laughs> Sure. And then the next book is what books do you need to read by the end of this year? I definitely have a few. Actually, this isn't one that I wrote down initially in like my answers, but one is more general and Ellen Hildebrand, which I plan to read very soon. I just want a nice, fun, cute, beachy summer read. And she will deliver that for me, I think. I've never read any of her books before. So she's definitely someone I want to read very soon. So that'll happen before the end of this year. Another book that I really, really want to and need to get to is Blue Lily Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the third book in the Raven Cycle that I started this year and I really want to continue. So that's a book I definitely want to get to. And then another book, this one's actually one that is like legit, I need to finish. That is The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. This is the last book in the Mistborn trilogy. I started this back in October, not even this year, and I am less than halfway through, but I would really like to be done with this trilogy to like, move on to other things. I'm saying that now, I have been enjoying this series. This will definitely pop up in my next completing every series I'm in the middle of because this is one that I absolutely, absolutely want to finish. And then the next question is how many five star reads have I found this year? And I think it's four. I've gone back and forth a little bit with some of my ratings, but I think it's genuinely four books been The Last Graduate, which I mentioned, Never Let Me Go, of course, and then Happy Place and Love Theoretically, because those are actual, like, two romances that have stuck in my brain as, like, these were very pivotal moments in my reading romance life. The next question is, what books do you want to reread this year? I do actually have another answer. <laughs> I was just talking about this with my cousin right before filming. I'm gonna get to something I've been teasing. I kind of want to reread Never Let Me Go. Literally in this year. I've read it for the first time this year. I kind of want to reread it again at some point this year. It just really hit me in a way I cannot explain. Another book that I do really want to reread is Beach Read because I haven't read it since I read it for the first time in 2020 and then reread it in 2020. So I haven't read it since then and I want to see if it like still holds its place as like one of my favorite romances ever. But a book I want to reread this year 
is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Sines. Um, this is my favorite book of all time. Uh-huh. 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 I'm fine. I'm really totally fine. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I read this for the first time in 2017 or 2018. I think it was 2018. And then I reread it summer of 2020. And then that's when I did this. And I really would like to get a fresh new copy. First of all, my copy's a little bit janky, which I'm fine with. I love it, but I don't think I could go back and re-annotate this. I mean, I guess I could maybe, but I have some highlights that I don't, it's just like yellow highlighter, which I guess is fine. I don't know. I kind of just want like a blank slate with some tabs that I could be a little bit more organized with. And I want to write more of my thoughts inside of the book. I never really, I didn't really write like thoughts or feelings or reactions to things. A lot of the reactions will probably just be actual tear stains on the page. So I really want to reread this book this year and just know I will not be okay. When I finish it. I love this book. I love this book. I love this book. I love this book. I know this book has had its moment. It has been the biggest book. It a lot of people have read it in the world, but if you have not read this book, I know it's not gonna hit the same for everyone. Like this is very specific to me and my life experience and my like feelings about myself and my identity. I just relate to these boys so much. Let me give a quick synopsis. I'm going on a little long about this, but it is about two boys, Aristotle and Dante, who are both Mexican boys, 15 years old, growing up in Texas in the 80s. And you follow the development of their friendship and you follow them as they discover things about themselves, about their identities, about their sexuality, discover things about their families. The differences in their families are so important and like the differences in the way they view their ethnicities is just so beautifully done. And I have no words that will ever properly express how much this book means to me. Oh God, I'm just gonna read this first bit because whoa, you're killing me. Dante can swim, Ari can't. Dante is articulate and self-assured. Ari has a hard time with words and suffers from self-doubt. Dante gets lost in po poetry and art. Ari gets lost in thoughts of his older brother who is in prison. Dante is fair-skinned. Ari's features are much darker. It seems that a boy like Dante, with his open and unique perspective on life, would be the last person to break down the walls that Ari has built around himself. <sighs> okay. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is a book you enjoyed with mixed reviews and that is Not In Love. What what a switch right now. Anyway, Not In Love by Ali Hazelwood because I know, I know it already has mixed reviews but I also know that this is not gonna work for a lot of people. Even my best friend, she liked it but it's not her favorite Ali Hazelwood. It's not my favorite Ali Hazelwood. I think it might be my second. I really enjoyed it. But it was still like kind of middle of the line, even for my best friend who really enjoys Allie Hazelwood. I really liked it and it worked for me. Like I really enjoyed it. Like I think I like this book more than majority of people will or have, but I also know that it's gonna work for a lot of people as well. Like I don't, I don't think this is like gonna be a universally hated book or anything like that, but I really enjoyed it. Five star predictions for the rest of the year. I don't know. I don't really predict five stars. I'll say that I think I can predict that I will have a, not I can, but I kind of want to predict that I'll have a five star horror book by the end of the year because I really, really want to dive into that genre a lot more. I'm hoping for a five star fantasy. I've had some five star romances, so I feel like I could like put that genre to the side a little, like I'm not gonna put it away, but I wanna focus on some other things. I don't know if I'm in a fantasy mood right now though, like it's summer. I really don't, I don't think I have any specific five star predictions. I'm really hoping to find some five star reads obviously, but I don't have anything in particular that I think would be five stars. I think if anything, a prediction would be another Kazuo Ishiguro would end up being five stars. And my 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 Mimi, my Mimi of Aristotle and Dante, my reread of Aristotle and Dante, like I know that's gonna be five stars. But that is the end of this video and this tag. I think this is a really good way of kind of checking in with yourself and like checking in with what favorite books or not favorite books you've had so far this year. Again, like I mentioned, I am gonna do a 
wrap up for the first half of this year because I haven't done any monthly wrap ups and I don't really know that I'm gonna do monthly wrap ups. There's just not really a video I'm that interested in. But I think like a yearly wrap up would be fun. Not yearly, like mid year wrap up. Uh, and I can talk about all the books I've read so far. Thank you for watching this. And I would love to actually hear some of you guys' like answers to these questions. You don't have to answer all of them because it is a lot, but I will put them all in the description so that if you want to, like, put it in that comment, indent, return, and answer each of them if you'd like to. I think that'd be fun. Just like looking through all the books you've read so far this year and like really seeing what new stories have like entered your life. That is it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.